Welcome to part two of this seven part mini series on how to write effective diet plans. In the last lesson, we covered the most important factor for getting results, which was client compliance. In today's lesson, we're gonna cover the next most important factor, which is energy balance. Now, we all know energy balance is the difference between the energy we take in versus the energy we expand. So the energy we expand, which is called our total daily energy expenditure, can be summarized by the following equation. The total daily energy expenditure is equal to the resting metabolic rate times the physical activity level times the thermic effect of feeding. Now, your resting metabolic rate is basically the amount of energy that you consume at complete rest. In other words, the amount of energy required just to keep you alive. So in other words, all your essential organs to carry out all their essential functions. That's our resting metabolic rate. That tends to be quite consistent, okay? It doesn't vary much person to person or even within a person. If it does, it's only within about 100 calories or so. The resting metabolic rate is highly dependent on your lean body mass, okay? So if you do an accurate body fat measure and you get someone's lean body mass, we can quite accurately predict the resting metabolic rate. On the other hand, physical activity level is the amount of energy we expand through movement. Now this, we can subdivide into two components. One is exercise or structured activity, and then the second component is non-exercise activity thermogenesis or spontaneous activity. So in other words, just the amount of energy we expand in our day-to-day -day tasks when we move around, walk around, things of that nature. Okay, and then lastly, we have the thermic effect of feeding, which is the amount of energy we expand just to digest food, okay? Now your goal, if you wanna lose body weight, or body fat more specifically, is to reduce your energy intake below that of your energy expenditure. We can do that either through reducing energy intake or increasing our energy expenditure. The key is, whatever combination of those two you use, is not to create too drastic of a deficit because when you start doing that, you start to ramp down the non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So this is actually the most variable component of our metabolism, okay? And it can vary greatly between individuals, but too much exercise or too low caloric intake can basically start ramping this down and you'll get a compensation in your metabolism. So the metabolism will lower to compensate to that decreased, um, basically, energy intake or increased energy expenditure. So the key to losing weight sustainably is to only create a small deficit. In other words, eat more, train more, or eat less, train less. Whereas most people do the opposite. They eat less and train more. So if you create too large a deficit like that, you may lose weight effectively for a short period of time, and then you're gonna plateau, you're gonna hit a wall. So if you want long-term weight loss, you want to create only a small deficit. So typically for clients with average body fat, I recommend around 15, 20%, okay? Creating enough of a deficit so the body can sense and tap into stored fat and mobilize uh, that stored energy, but not too great of a deficit where you start to ramp down metabolic rate and also become more prone to catabolizing muscle tissue because muscle tissue has a permissive role on fat loss. In other words, for a given deficit, if you lost two kilos, if you were able to maintain all your muscle mass, you'd in essence lose two kilos of fat. But let's say you lost a kilo of fat and a kilo of muscle for that same deficit, you've only lost now one kilo of fat. So that's why it's important to at least spare lean muscle tissue when you're dieting. Now for more overweight clients, because they're more efficient at conserving energy, you can generally use a bigger deficit, so maybe 30, 35%. Because when you have more body fat, the body senses that as an energy reserve. And as a result, when you create a deficit, even if it's a large deficit, you're more likely to tap into stored fat instead of catabolizing muscle tissue. So just to recap that, use about 15 to 20% deficit for leaner clients and maybe 30, 35% deficit for more overweight clients. And that can be done through a combination of both diet and exercise. Now, let's say, we have a client that wants to gain lean body mass. What studies show is if you increase calories substantially above baseline, that doesn't seem to translate to more gains in lean body mass versus only increasing slightly above baseline. If you increase substantially above baseline, what actually happens is you gain more body fat disproportionately. 
So if someone's concerned more about gaining lean body mass, I recommend taking about 10, maybe 15% above their baseline. At the very most, for most people that are not highly thermogenic, 20% should suffice. And then beyond that, you're just gonna gain more body fat. So a quick recap, energy balance is simply the energy we're taking in versus the energy that we're expanding. If you wanna lose body fat, you need to create an energy deficit but you don't want to create too large of an energy deficit where you start to ramp down metabolism or you start catabolizing muscle tissue instead of fat. If you want to gain muscle, you want to take your calories above your baseline, but not excessively because then instead of just gaining lean muscle, you're also going to start to disproportionately put on body fat. Okay, so I hope that was useful for you. That wraps up in a nutshell energy balance. And then tomorrow, we're going to cover the macronutrients. Thank you for listening.